Now workshop. Musicians are gathering this week at Manchester Royal Northern College of Music for Manchester Bass Week. Very big, but very beautiful. That could be used for storing clothes in, for example. Like a big mushroom. <laughs> it's got a spike in the edge. You can play it sitting down or standing up, and you have a wood thing to put a spike in. A hollow box with strings. It's about as big as me. It goes bum bum bum. Well, it's got twiddly bits on the top, um, long thin bits down the middle of it. A large body with two lobes uh, and a long slender neck. It's big around here, play with it. And you scrape them with a bow and they make noises that are supposed to be pleasant. <laughs> different teachers aspects of playing the bass and their different techniques and all that sort of thing. You know, I've never met anybody from a foreign country who's played the bass apart from the students here and there's just so many. I mean how many times do you see 170 odd double bass players gathered in the same building? It's going to be a bit nerve-wracking as well. We take lots of interesting ideas back to Jersey. We're hoping to uh, start a primary education teaching double bass in the primary education in Jersey. We don't actually do that at the moment. Well, private lessons on yeah. good lesson with Lucas Drew, hopefully, and um, Duncan McTeer. So I'm looking forward to them, meeting them. I think it's going to be great fun. I mean, we, we've all been preparing for it very seriously. But, I mean, even yesterday when the first players arrived, you begin to realise everything's going to be very high-spirited and everyone's going to have a good time, I think. Good afternoon. Welcome to Workshop. Manchester Bass Week, live from the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester, a week-long festival devoted to that Cinderella of the orchestra, the double bass. Great performers and fervent students, all here devoted to destroying the myth that it's not a glamorous instrument. But it is a heavy instrument. In fact, you do need a warm-up session. This session conducted by Rodney Sladford, head of strings here at the Royal Northern. Here we are. Right. Let's do a slow windscreen wiper first of all, after a little shower of rain. Right? To the right and to the left. Try and keep your thumbs bent and keep your fingers bent. This is so that you really learn the weight of the bow in the tip. Here's me standing here like this. You should have your arms down by the side and relax your knees. Bow management. We've had our physical coordination bit. Right, now a little faster. Getting up the smart American model. Right. Now the Italian one. That's right, wild and furious. Drunk, probably. Right, here we are. Oh, I shall get into trouble, won't I? Now, let's just try lifting the bows up and down with our fingertips. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. Up in the air. Now, let's do swinging with the bow. This is to learn exactly the movement of the bow in the hand. Let's go round here and round here. And just while you're doing it, watch and see what's happening to your right hand on the stick. Because as you throw the bow from side to side, your fingers should be very flexible on the stick, which is what we're after. Stephen Parrott doesn't know his left from his right. I always suspected it. His age should be ashamed. Just in case he's trying to hide, he's the bearded one in the middle. <laughs> well done, Stephen. Still going in the opposite direction. Never mind, you'll catch up one day. <laughs> Jolly good. Okay. Fine. That's not bad at all. Monkey up the stick. Let's just try this one. Now we're going to crawl up to the tip of the stick and we're going down on our ankles while we're doing it. Okay. Physical and mental coordination, this one. I didn't say hold it right up there. I'll put... Ah, that's wonderful. O'Grady says. Right, now try and climb up the stick. Now put your left hand in the air as you're doing it. Now your left hand out to the side. 
Playing a musical instrument is a very complicated thing. Just do exactly as I do now. Rodney Slatford there. That isn't a new kind of aerobics. It isn't silly. It's actually very necessary. You've got to be tough to play this instrument. It takes, for a start, enormous muscle power and the fingers to hold down these very thick strings. You've then got to have real muscles to push across the bow. It's a very wide bow. Get it across these strings. That takes strength. And the whole thing weighs 14 pounds or more. Just holding it up there in the right position for the entire course of a concert takes strength. But the musicians here aren't just learning strength, muscular exercises, they're learning how to play this instrument to a greater degree from a series of international experts. In the course of the next couple of hours or so, we'll be dropping in on some master classes with internationally renowned musicians. We'll be learning about the Romanian mini bass, which is bringing the instrument to young children. We're now going to go, in fact, live over to the main concert hall where Klaus Stoll, internationally renowned double bassist, is taking some time off from international performances and his work with the Berliner Philharmonic to teach one of the young students here, Alfred Matre. That's right. I need a bigger carpet for tomorrow night. <laughs> One to mine. And... So uh, it's not louder uh, than, than the playing before, but there is, a, is, is, is some pitch on places, so the easier uh, can listen to you. Yeah? Please, they, they should discover your, your part. It's a very beautiful one, because you're with concert. Maybe before, we, we, we start before. Uh, Yeah, uh, I, I play uh, the, the, the same, and, and we, we start again playing with you. Um, yeah? You could uh, watch me when I'm playing the long, very dynamic notes. I'm limiting the bow speed, and that makes it possible. You know, we have the thickest strings and the shortest bow of all string instruments, and we should know about that. Yeah, be, be careful calculating this. Maybe you play again from uh, ta da 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> Long, long, 
way of dimming your nose. Yeah? Please, uh, uh, calculate this. It's a very important thing with the contrabass. Uh, to, to calculate this uh, dimming your nose successfully enough, don't start to make a dimming your too early. Yeah? Maybe is that possible to start there again? Yeah? It's uh, about four bars before the trios. So, hold this small bow. Expressive play. Expressive and minor, minor. Minor. And go down. And now you are free. Belly. Start new. question too. You played it very well. I, I enjoy it. But there should be more presence for, for uh, showing uh, the, the rhythmical approach too. Uh, maybe show before you, you play there, before it starts with the 16 notes. Maybe you, you start when, 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 when it's coming to that place. Any place. Maybe start. the same for you. Uh, uh, watch, watch me. Uh, I do some things to survive. Yeah? It's only to for surviving. And there is one in the part uh, there is in the part, in the solo part, a piano from there. And that was Kuzhevitsky knows exactly. There is no chance to make more crescendo, more than, more than, than dynamic than where we are at that moment. So he shocks back to the piano and maybe, maybe that, that will... will uh... No, you take your... What, what about the two And now the fun of uh, learning instruments. Wendy is on. taking a yeah. session of musical bingo. By bingo, you have to get the notes right. On we go. Now I'm going to start this side again. Give these people a chance. This is one I think you should all know. Well done. Very good. Are you sure you're right? You think you're right. Right, let's give her a clap. Well done. Right, put your bingo cards on the floor and the green pieces and pick up your bases and get ready because we're going to sing a song. <laughs> The next game, again to improve recognition of notes, is the calypso game. Calypso's on the double bass. Just watch and listen. And then I'll know that if every, when everybody's got their bow in the air, then I'll know we're all ready to start. Anybody not ready? Not quite. Right, who's going to tell us what to do? Who's, who remembers what we're going to do? Right, tell us what we're going to do. Very good. And how many parts are we in? Who's going to tell me? Three. We're in three parts. Hands up, people who are in num number ones. I can see a number one that isn't. She can't put her hand up. It's all right. Hands up, number twos. Number twos, I need you to sing very loud. Hands up, number threes. Right. We well, think we're ready. Off we go then. We're going to sing it first. <laughs> Thank you. 
A jazz club may not seem to be the obvious place to come to to discuss a classical instrument, but of course the double bass is basic to jazz. Ever since the beginning of this century, when the marching bands of New Orleans went stationary and could actually hold one of these things, the double bass, not bowed because one of the early players left his bow at home and had to pluck it, the double bass, plucked or slapped, has been one of the stars of jazz. It's a very important part of, uh, of all music, but particularly in jazz. As a classical musician, have you ever played jazz on the double bass? Yes, I spent two years when I was at university playing in a, a jazz quartet. A very good experience it was too. I think it teaches everybody to uh, listen very carefully. To the music you'd recommend it for classical students then? Play for oh, absolutely, absolutely, yes. But you didn't start playing jazz, did you? You started as a classical musician wanting to play the double bass. Why the double bass when we hear that it's so unglamorous? Um, I suppose the simple question to the uh, answer to that is that uh, when my brother left the school, there was no bass player in the school orchestra. And I said, can I have a go? We know what pop stars live like, motels, women, booze and the rest. What's the life of a classical musician? It's hard work, I think, especially if you're a member of an orchestra. Um, I do quite a lot of chamber music, quite a lot of touring, a little bit of solo work. Um, I get around a lot, but it's, uh, it's hard work. Now, obviously it's your instrument, Duncan, but is it also your instrument in that you actually love it and it's your favourite instrument? It's a wonderful feeling to be sitting on the bottom of the harmony changes of all sorts of music, whether it be jazz, classical music, whatever. You control a lot of what goes on. All music, I think, is based on harmony, and the harmony is based on the chord changes, if you like, to put it in jazz terms. And you're saying that it's the double bass in all these musics that holds those chord changes together? Yes, I think so. I, I don't think you would notice uh, the double bass part so much, but if it wasn't there, then you would notice its absence. The most important place for the double bass to hold together, to underscore the chord changes, the harmonics, is here on the concert platform with a symphony orchestra. Now, I know that from here, the violins are there, woodwind are there, but where are the bass? Well, I take it the double basses are over there. Is that where you normally are? Yeah, quite a long way away, isn't it? Right by the exit door, by the look of it, in case you do, you do something wrong, you can get <laughs> quick, out. Quick getaway. How many double basses are there normally over there? Eight in a symphony orchestra. And, I mean, w we don't really hear it, do we? It's just underneath everything. Yeah, most of the time. Occasionally you do when they get a tune, but most of the time it's just giving added depth. What actually can you hear over there as you're over there? Not that much, actually. The, the brass, maybe, cellos, violas, but not so much from the other side of the orchestra. If I can be rude and say that one of the reasons double basses are in a world of their own is that very few of the great composers have ever written pieces specially for the double bass. Yeah, that's very true. Um, a lot of people may not know this, but Mozart actually wrote a concert aria for bass voice and obligato double bass. Why? Well, there is a story which goes that um, he rather fancied the wife of the bass player in his orchestra. And so he wrote a very difficult solo for this bass player to keep him occupied. Mozart's enthusiasm for the double bass then may have had strings attached, but not so Duncan McTeers. Duncan is now an internationally renowned double bass player, one of the youngest professors in the country, despite only starting on his chosen instrument in his mid-teens. In comparison, these two youngsters from Saddleworth, 11-year-old Vicky Kent and 10-year-old Stephen Ramsden, have a head start. They're learning on quarter-size Romanian double basses. Three. Their skills were put to the test in an impromptu recital, or busk, without a single rehearsal, when they played together for the first time with Duncan McTeer. Anyone got any requests for Old Man Rivet? Is there anything that Duncan can play? No? Yeah. Oh, London's, burning. Huh? London's burning. London's burning. London's burning. Come on, can you do London's burning? You can do London's burning, can't you? Yeah. Right, can you do it? 
He can't, he's I the one who's <laughs> A pound for if I were a rich man. You're very lucky there, right? If I were a rich man, I think we stick this up into there, yeah, like that, and we play if I were a rich man. Now, can you can you play A B A A? a. Don't go crazy because a lot of it was out of tune, I know that. Don't go mad. Just five, just two feet, lovely. Oh, thank you very, very much. Fresh from their triumphant and highly lucrative engagement in St. Anne's Square, Manchester, our trio have fled the fans and now pack and depart. An activity which showcases a bass player's need of considerable patience, not a virtue which everyone possesses. Come on! This is the main road, not a concert hall movie! What are the strains for a classical musician? The strains of playing in front of a public, trying to get it absolutely bang on in a concert. Concentration, I think, is, is one of the most difficult things to uh, learn. Do you ever play bum notes? Oh, yes. Yes, I think we all do. If the bass in a classical orchestra plays a bum note, does one hear it? Do the, other, the rest of the orchestra hear it? I think you're less likely to hear it uh, than if it was in the violin department. But with a good pair of lugols, yes, you could. I've always wondered what happens in a classical orchestra if someone plays regular bum notes. Yeah. Do, does someone tell you? Um, yes, possibly. <laughs> if it's really uh, desperate, yes, I think. Uh, obviously, before the performance, you don't want that sort of thing happening in a performance. Have you ever been told off? Oh, yes. You have? Yes, last week, even. <laughs> <laughs> excruciating guitar playing, showing what, um, what the double bass can do for a James Taylor song, but that was easy for you, wasn't it? Mm. It was difficult playing with me, but it was an easy tune. a long time ago. <laughs> Believe me, I always get that right, play it perfectly at home on my own. Now I have some idea of the pressures a musician is under when the lights and the cameras are on, a professional musician that is, and I have some idea of the pressure facing Duncan McTeer at this very moment. He's about to give a special recital of an extremely fiendishly difficult piece, Glier's Tarantella. Duncan. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. Carl Atwood there, also his regular accompanist. And Tarantella, so called because it mimics the spasms you might get if you were bitten by a tarantula spider. In the next half hour, we're going to have another master class, this time an American maestro, teaching four young bass players, a string quartet from the National Youth Orchestra. Also, how basses are made, more on the Romanian mini basses and the explosion they're making amongst young children taking up the instrument, and what Strauss sounds like in the doghouse, a special encore number. Join us again in two minutes. This is the only domestic vacuum cleaner in the world that washes, Vax. Vax has a unique washing action, continuously drawing clean water deep into the fibers, getting dirt like this out of the cleanest looking carpets. Result, cleaner, brighter carpets that will stay looking new. Vax will wash out spills instantly, leaving your floors clean and dry. And Vax is also a super light, super powerful vacuum cleaner that cleans everything from carpets to curtains. Vax, the only domestic vacuum cleaner in the world that washes. To discover Oil of Yule is to discover the secret of younger looking skin. Oil of Yule is a special blend of oils and moisture in harmony with those found in your skin. Discover Oil of Yule. It can help you keep the beauty of young looking skin. Till we meet under the great oak, love, Robin. <laughs> Till we meet under the great oak. Till we meet. It's for you. It's for me. Greetings. If thee be missing a loved one, use the phone. You'll find it so much easier. Oh. The phone. It's for you to get hold of a loved one. choose a lavatory bleach because it's thick. Well, there's one bleach that's thicker than any of the others. Vortex. Look. Ordinary thick bleach and Vortex. 
If I drop this weight into the ordinary bleach, it sinks immediately. But Vortex is so thick, the weight's practically floating. Vortex does what ordinary bleaches can't. It really clings to the bowl, even through the flush. So Vortex keeps killing germs, even after flushing. Vortex, so thick it kills germs, even after flushing. You were committed to the leading automatic powder until you tried dyes in your hot whites wash. What were your results? Well, these socks, they had sand all over them. I mean, look at that. I mean, you can't beat that, can you? Also, this is Matthew's shirt. Drinks and chocolate. It was filthy. I mean, look at that. Bright and white. I thought it was very good value for money. Cost less. Obviously, when you bring a family up, that's very important. So, will you swap your packet of dyes for two packets of your old powder? No way. No. No, thank you. Why not? Because I'm really pleased with the Daz whiteness. Daz is great. I'll stick with it. Try Daz yourself in the hot whites wash. Most women agree Daz gives unbeatable white at a price that's right. Vax, the only domestic vacuum cleaner in the world that washes. Keep your carpets cleaner and brighter with Vax. Now at Manweb, Norweb and other good stores. Welcome back to Workshop, Manchester Bass Week Live from the Royal Northern College of Music. Something like 200 double bass players here this week, learning and teaching their chosen instrument. And can I show you something? This is, well, it's a drawing of Santa Claus playing the double bass. In fact, it's a Christmas card. And there on the back is a mini bass. It was done by a gentleman called Joe Ruddy, who comes from Surrey. He did it to raise money for children to learn to play the double bass. He raised 100 pounds with a Christmas card. Joe Ruddy's here, but so is Joe Ruddy Jr., age nine, who together with his friend Dominic Matters, also age nine, will now play for us a duet, Dinosaur Dance. <laughs> do a Beguine beat. It's a South American rhythm and I would like to show you how it sounds. I will also demonstrate on this, the double bass for you. This is what it sounds like. Inez Weirich teaches the double bass mm -hmm. in Amarillo in Texas. She believes in using different styles of music. This there. in fact is a slow rumba okay. to teach youngsters um, the versatility the of their the instrument. Along the back side here we have several different sounds as you can hear around the side of the bass. And here's the sound. We're going to find all different kinds of sound and you may experiment with your own bass to find a good, a good sound. Okay, sounds like some pretty good sounds. Oops, excuse me. Now take your knuckles and once again, this is the rhythm. On the, on the double bass, it may sound like this. Or. Or. Don't hurt your knuckles. Keep it, you may also use, let's say, the fleshy part of the palm. Let's try it all together. Ready? One, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, now let's stop. That sounds very good. Now, could everybody take their hand, one of their hands, probably your left hand will do, and squeak it up the back of the bass? Let's try it again, all together, real loud. Here we go. Yes. We need a few of you to do that right after we say one, right after we do our, uh, 
or like that, right after the first one, come up the back. Okay? Let's try that all together. One, two, one, two, three, four. Good, very good. When you come up the back with that squeak, I'd like it if you come real fast. Make it real short and real fast and come up the back of that. Let's add maybe some maracas to this. How about that? And maybe a tambourine and some bells. Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Well, we recorded that a couple of hours ago. We're now actually going to go back inside the concert hall for the master classes that are continuing. This time it's Lucas Drew. Lucas is a virtuoso performer and also professor of the double bass at the University of Miami in Florida. He's at this moment giving a master class to a quartet, four youngsters from the National Youth Orchestra. They're working on a piece by Bartok. And of the four youngsters, three of them are still doing their A-levels, one of them just gone to university to do maths. Duncan McTeam did maths as well. Maths and music, the mystical connection. Let's go over to the concert hall, Lucas Drew and a master class. fourth movement of the Joseph Lauber Quartet. The next segment of our class, we're going to read and literally read a mini suite of Bartok. This is taken from the Microcosmos, Microcosmos and the Children's for Children's Piano Pieces. So these are just arrangements of four pieces for bass quartet. So they'll be reading this also. We'll read each movement, I think, and then make some comments and work on them, as time permits. Okay, let's We'll begin with the scherzo. Okay, everybody have it? One, two. Now, let's go back with the dynamics. Watch from the beginning, very secco pizzicato, dry pizzicato. Let's just start right at the beginning. One, two. Good. Okay, in other words, hear the rest. Don't, don't hear anything in the rest. Let me hear just the third and fourth part. One, two. Beep, beep, short. Okay, stop the ring during the rest on the off beats as well. Okay, good. Now letter A, let's practice this imitation. Loud and then less the second measure after A, and then you come out. <coughs> okay? A, one, two. Good. Okay, good. So every time you have like four after A, yum bum bum, the accent on the quarter note longer. And then we're coming to a loud part, three after B. Let's practice B. Those three bars, crescendo, three after B. Change your bow on the pomata. Okay? Letter B, everybody. One, two, one. Bop, 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 bop. Good. Now, three after B, use more bow. Pom, pom, beam, uh, to get the crescendo. B, one, two. Bop, 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 bop. Change. Now, good. Now, the next page, C. Piano, but accent. Very staccato, staccato, but accent a little bit. Let's try it to see. Just that line now. Ready? Piano. One, two. 
Good. Long. Okay, and long on the quarter note. Then letter D, forte. But watch the diminuendo. Okay, diminuendo to the end. Okay, very good. Let's do it from the beginning now, all the way through, and catch those points. Okay. One, two, pop short. One, two, pop, pop, one. One. Good. One. Now long. Accent. Good. Okay, the last two notes, space between them. As though you were bowing day to Shailon Zaya. Pum, 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 pum. Now let's take the last <clears throat> from letter D. Okay, still keep the pizzicata short now at D. One, two. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, a um, little more on the first note, a little more first part. One, two. Now diminuendo. Okay, and freeze. Now don't let the open string ring. Bum, bum, and close it. One more chance. D, one, two. Good. Okay, the next movement. The next movement is the chorale from Four Children of Barkett. <clears throat> okay, the main thing before we start, before we read it, watch the dynamics mainly, the hairpins. Diminuendo and crescendo, as Mark. Okay, let's try. A little faster than, than we may have thought. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I think we've done very well with that. Let's try just to read from letter D maybe to the end, and then we'll go to the next movement. The point of the bow at letter E, let's try to keep the tempo. Uh, space between the notes, palm, 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 palm. Very little bow, no vibrato for the effect, but keep, let's keep the tempo. 
Okay, letter D. Very little weight on the bow on these. Just use plenty of bow. Very nice, though. Now, accompany. Let it ring with separate. Crescendo with him. Crescendo to three. Good. The next is a dance uh, from Four Children by piano, for piano. Okay, let's let's read this. Just a couple of reminders before we start. Look at letter B, uh, the second, third, and fourth part. You pizzicata between the bridge and the tailpiece, and then if you have the D string marked, you just pizzicata on the D string. And watch in the first part, Ponticello at letter B, and then it's Natural after B, about six bars. Okay, let, let's read it, not too fast. Secco, bup, 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 dry, short, separate, clean. One, two. Bup, 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 accent. Okay, he finishes the measure before we do, but continue the retard one before B. Okay, good. Let's go back to letter A. Watch the changes now. We're collegno, two, three, and four, pizzicata in the top part. Okay, right on letter A. Right at letter A. One, two. Now listen to the first part. Rodney, you must be very pleased to have people like Lucas, people like Klaus Stahl over here teaching our young people. I'm absolutely de delighted because you've got two of the world's greatest teachers, as you can see, one from the States and one from Germany. And it's just unbelievable that they're able to reach so many people. What do you expect to achieve from this week? I hope the standard of bass playing will go up. We've certainly had a great number of young people and old people who are having a fantastic time, about 200 players, I think, in all, never mind the day visitors that are going to come in. The standards must get better. And you yourself, you're enjoying the week. I mean, you set it up and it's going as you expected, better than you expected? It's absolutely exhausting for us, but that's not the point. It's, uh, yes, it's going very, very well. Everything seems very smooth. There's not a lot of space for all the bases, but there we are. I, I know, I can, I can see that the box is littered all around here. Now, what about the general public? When can they come? What, what can they see in terms of concerts? Well, tomorrow night we've got Klaus Stoll from the Berlin Phil, who's been teaching, as you know, giving a wonderful double bass recital. Thursday is open day for schools, and anybody that wants to come round can have a look all day. We've got little trips on the quarter of an hour. Uh, we've got the great one more, group one more, one more, go on, one more. Great group concert and Berlin Philharmonic duo on Friday. Friday night, that, that's the big special on Friday night. Now, we do want to thank two people very specially here. Can I have Vicky and Stephen, come on in here, because we really put you through it, making you play with that Duncan fellow and, 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 and busking and stuff. How have you two enjoyed the week? All right, thank you. All right, thank you. What about yourself? Oh, it's, it's great. Sam. It's great. That's, yeah. that's great, Stephen. Right. Uh, what have you learnt? Well, I've learnt the B-flat scale. The B flat scale. B you've learned the B flat scale, have you? Looking yes. a bit puzzled there. Yes, I have. Um, we've, al we've we've also learnt how to bow properly and under to underhand or overhand? Mm, overhand. Overhand. Right. Here's a couple of um, a couple of records for you, which both Rodney and Klaus play on. Track one on this particular piece is called Strauss in a Doghouse. It seems a strange thing to do to Strauss, all those romantic waltzes. In fact, it's just what our quartet from the National Youth Orchestra are going to play us out with, Strauss in a Doghouse. From us all here, thank you, Rodney, and good afternoon.